The third day of rehearsals at Eurovision 2015 are now over. We've seen another eight acts, and I don't know about you guys, but I thought today was kind of bland on the whole. I'm slightly disappointed, but there were standout acts, and I'm gonna kick it off by saying, and you might like this, my <laughs> Irishman, that Ireland was a standout act. It's very subtle, but it's very tasteful. It's very sophisticated. I mean, we talk about the Late Late Show, and you know, Molly's problem wasn't her song or her voice. I now realize the problem was the Late Late Show when you're in that little studio which look, looks quite cheap. Here on this grand stage, it's a solo girl on a piano, you know, with a cellist and someone on the drums. But she really filled the stage. Yeah. I, vocally, it was fantastic. She was a little nervous, but I think she's going to improve upon that as the week goes on. Mm. And, like, it was the biggest surprise for me because the last act I thought that would be blowing me away here, even though I'm Irish, I didn't think Ireland would could do it, but they did. The staging was wonderful. They used the screens and the floors to great effect. The only thing was the nerves, and then that, like, I think she got so nervous that at times she forgot to look at the camera. But apart from that, like, it, it worked really, really well. And it's the sort of song that you think, oh, it can only work on an intimate setting because it's so focused on Molly. But it, it really translated to the big stage very well. She grew in confidence, though. Like, she was looking at the camera more and more as each run through went through. Um, and it was a gorgeous backdrop. That was probably one of the best that we've seen so far. Um, really confident vocals when she got that, like, when she was happy with it. I do think that it will qualify now, particularly looking at what else we've seen today. Um, I think it stands out quite well at the start of the day, out of all those songs, so I do, I have high hopes for Molly. And we should probably just clarify, she's sitting in a beautiful LED forest, so she's moved from kind of the dive piano bar of the Late Late Show <laughs> into this beautiful, you know, wilderness, and she's the queen of the jungle in a sense, and it really works thematically because love is the most basic human emotion, so she's in a state of nature, bam, they are real clever. Now, Porek, who else stands out to you? I was nearly disappointed by everyone else. Lithuania stood out just because their staging was so garish. Um, like, I wasn't a fan of it. You liked it. It improved in your estimation, I think. But I preferred the simplicity back in Eurovision. Obviously, they had to amp it up for Eurovision, but I think nearly they went too far. And then there was the other problem that they had this great chemistry that seems to be in loss to a certain extent because it seems forced, whereas it was much more natural back in February or January or whenever they were chosen. I would say I, I enjoyed Malta. I do think that she did well. I think that, obviously we said there's something missing, so it'll probably enjoy it even more come Friday. Um, I think that she was, Amber was very good vocally. There were a couple of times, once she was like three or four run-throughs in, where she, that big break note, she kind of faltered a little bit on it, but um, I thought she was quite good. I thought she was very, yeah, very, um, very good for the day. In the context of the rehearsals from the first semi-final, maybe not so much, but... And so, Chris, who is your standout of the day? Oh, it was definitely Ireland. Definitely oh, okay. Ireland. Um, yeah, Ireland, then Malta. I'd probably then say, like, Norway, but they didn't really impress me, but I think that says more about the, the quality of today. Yeah, you know what's interesting is before this semi-final rehearsal day, I thought Norway would be the standout act because the Norwegian presentation is so sophisticated, so beautiful. But this, something was a li little cold about it. I don't know if they're, they're, they haven't revealed the costume, they haven't revealed some kind of special effect, but it was almost as if on this big stage they couldn't fill it, which really surprised me because in Norway they completely filled it. I do like their costumes, um, but I think I might have preferred the Norwegian and staging even, you know, they had that little accent of colour, whereas this was all white L and Nikki blanched realness and it didn't work for me. But it's such a dark song that the colour scheme seems bizarre to me, that because there's not even a moment of redemption at the end where there, there should be the white, and yeah, the staging again, because I really liked in Norway the way the camera kind of followed them round and there was something to it whereas this was just random camera shots here and there, there wasn't I did like the ending though, how she gives the camera an extra evil look with all that hairography going on. I think that both of them have great hairography. His beard, her hair, and like, they're, they're very original is what I'm trying to get at. They have these little acts, these bohemian accents, I guess mm. you could call them. It was kind of a, it was a step back from Melody Grand Prix. Um, I just, it just kind of felt like where we've always said like, oh, they had the best chemistry than Alina and Stig. I felt Alina and Stig had best chemistry this time around, so... Agreed. Um, yeah, I, it, I just felt a little bit underwhelmed, considering they were what I was looking forward to the most today. 
And there are some acts I don't think any of us were looking forward to, and the top of my list would be Portugal, Leonor Andrada. I was hoping, I was really hoping that the staging would save this, because I, I think the melody's okay, but no, it's just, it's just blue and boring, and you know, she's wearing a body condom, and she looks like a bat, and that's high fashion, that's, it's quite fun, and you know, it's a great starting point for something colorful, but then it's just flat the whole time. The dress is the best bit of the entire performance, like, yeah. it was just like standard concert kind of lighting, nothing special for Eurovision. It was it was just bland. And it was just forgettable. Like I couldn't think of things I wanted to say about it having seen it three times. Porg, who was your failure of the day? <sighs> Montenegro. Well like other people were impressed, but it's a Balkan ballad. They're an acquired taste, I think, and he didn't do enough to convert me to be a Balkan ballad fan or a fan of his song. He sang da da da, da. It was fine. He sang competently. The stage show was competently. It had mountains of dancers in it. But it, there was nothing to grab me. Yeah, I mean, it's very spiritual, very soulful. And so in the beginning, I thought, ooh, I'm going to love this. And then it felt a little flat. But then it picked up again when he comes in with that amazing mm. beat, the stomping. I just wish that came a little earlier, where there was a way to translate that drive from the second half to the first. But maybe that's why the second half is so good, because the beginning is so slow. Yeah. I mean, I'd say, actually, San Marino impressed me to a degree it still is quite low down on my list of the day just because the song is the song but Michaela and Anita were actually really good they've had the U Eurovision experience fair enough it was only junior Eurovision but they nailed all their camera shots I do think they'll have some good visuals if they get the chain of lights going through the crowd so I'm kind of hopeful that they won't be dead last I have a feeling Portugal are heading for that but um and yeah, it just felt a bit like everybody was a bit off their game. Yeah, I just, I'm just i surprised. I think the first half of the second semi-final is the weakest <laughs> segment mm. of all of Eurovision, and um, we really felt it today. But I will say, Lithuania grew in my estimation. I know y'all disagree, but I actually thought it had more energy, more vigor. I believed the chemistry more. I know y'all are sick of them, but that's because you've watched it like 90 million times on YouTube. <laughs> um, in any event, those are our thoughts from here in the Wiener Stadthalle. We'll be back tomorrow with the second half of the second semi-final. Stay tuned. Bye!